welcome to today's episode of the Balanced Approach Podcast. I'm your host, Lou Padian. I hope that you're doing well and are enjoying the podcast and the topics we've covered so far. These podcasts are released every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so be sure to subscribe wherever you are listening to be kept up to date. So today's episode is around five things I don't do as a nutritionist, and hopefully this will be a bit of an eye-opener for people that I don't live this perfectly nutritionally perfect diet. And again, as a personal trainer, I, I don't have the perfect exercise regime, or as a health coach, I don't have the perfect health routine. But there's a reason for that. Maybe that's our understanding of what this perfectionist and social media narrative around perfection and health is quite misleading. So first of all is I don't particularly buy organic food. So organic food, sort of the myth is that it reigns supreme, that it's so much better for us regards to health and has a huge amount of nutritional benefits, better for the environment. And the research doesn't quite support that. There is some restriction in order to be organic around practices and in regards to pesticides and herbicides that they can use but actually research doesn't actually show there's any particular difference between the nutritional content of organics versus conventionally grown produce so that alongside them being a lot more expensive i think on the previous episodes we spoke about this i haven't looked at the data but i think was it 30 to 40 percent sometimes even more like 60 percent more expensive depending on the food that it's just, especially in today's current climate of finances being overstretched, it's just not worth it, in my opinion. And it's something that I often have to talk to patients and clients about that don't feel the pressure. If you do not want specifically to buy organic, there is no additional health benefits from what I've read. And, and you're better off spending your money on other things that probably have more benefit. So second up is I don't earn my food through exercise. So that's often that people something that people will promote online is that you if you eat this chocolate bar you need to burn this amount of calories and it's a really convoluted way to look at it and exercise has so many more benefits than burning calories mentally physically emotionally it just helps me in so many other ways and i don't want to reduce it and have this really reductionist approach of well it's just helping me burn more calories it helps me with other forms of movement so if i'm strength training it helps with my running running helps with my headspace and, and a challenge for me i understand that i have to fuel for that appropriately so i will have more calories if i run on certain days and that that flexibility is nice but on days where i don't run if i'm feeling overly hungry potentially because i haven't slept very well or i run the day before i'll eat more food it's not a simple i need to burn more to eat more that is a nice consequence of it but it can really mess up people's relationships with food that if you are overly restricting then you will lead to a poor relationship with those foods not being able to manage your behaviors and emotions around them potentially but also really negates the benefits of exercise if you don't measure your calories while you're burning while you're exercising that's completely fine and a perfectly healthy way to promote to um, approach exercise and i would rarely do that unless i'm working with someone who's sort of an elite athlete and we need to sort of manage body competition composition there may be ways that we look at energy invest and energy out for people who want to lose weight but it's not as simple as you need to exercise more because i think that really devalues exercise and creates a really terrible relationship with it so i don't exercise to earn food and i don't see um, food as something that needs to be earned either next up on a similar note is i don't demonize delicious foods certain foods online are claimed to be inherently bad and this is what really frustrates me by a lot of wellness influencers they pick up a food and say this is bad for you this is toxic poisonous it's just absolute nonsense and this promotes a really restrictive diet approach to eating food, which we not we, what we want. A phrase that I've repeated numerous times since I read it, and it's something that I've believed but struggled to put into words for a while, is there's no bad foods but bad portions. And that's really the crux of it, is that there's foods that I enjoy that I just need to be more mindful of. I know that they're more calorie dense, that they're really easy to overeat, but you know what? They fit into my lifestyle really, really well. And it's something that I enjoy having if I'm managing my weight, if I'm dieting, um, then I probably just don't have them as often or I find suitable alternatives. And I used to talk about this quite a lot with ice cream. There are a variety of ice creams now that are lower calorie. So if you're wanting to be more mindful of your calories, then they might be better choices. They're not the best choice. They are not the perfect choice. Nothing is. 
but they might be slightly better depending on your values and your goals and your preferences. Same with pizzas. If I'm wanting a pizza, I'll have a pizza. Luckily, the gluten-free pizzas are pretty poor, even on delivery. So the standard, the bar's not very high, but a good frozen pizza will suit me down to the ground. But again, if I'm being more mindful of my calories, then I'll probably have a frozen pizza because we need 700, 800 calories rather than 1,500 calories from a takeaway. So there's all these things that I make as trade-offs. But does it stop me if we go out and have a pizza and go, well, actually, no, I can't have that. It's got too many calories. No, not at all. I might count it in. I might be a bit more mindful throughout the day, be mindful I'm eating it. But again, it's just about looking at the overall picture of having a healthy and balanced life in general. Nutrition plays a part in that. It's not the be all end all. And actually, when you see people are so super focused on nutrition and health, actually it falls into unhealthy practices because they become so obsessed with it that they don't actually end up living life because they're so focused on preventing the end of life. And it's just a really, really poor, in my opinion anyway, way to, to spend my energy and time. If I eat slightly more calories on a day, it's not the end of the world. But having that sense of flexibility and preventing that feeling of deprivation, which is something that people really need to give themselves permission for, is not to feel deprived. That's allowing themselves to have these foods and learning how to manage and manage them throughout their dieting phase or their maintenance phase, whatever period or just living life in general. These foods can feature within your diet, these higher calorie chocolates, sweets, cakes, takeaway foods, eating out of restaurants. They can all feature within a healthy and balanced diet. But we need to have a look at how we're going to manage and navigate that. But I'd never tell someone to cut out a certain food or demonize it because it's not productive for them. It's not good messaging from me. I don't believe it as well. But also it's probably not going to lead them making sustainable changes long term, especially if it's a food that they enjoy. So I don't demonize delicious foods personally or with anyone I work with. Next up is I don't judge other people's choices. So with regards to food and things like that i often feel that if people knew i was a nutritionist or a health coach or anything like that and i was at the till the shopping and i was at the conveyor belt and got my food on there and they've got theirs out if they knew what i did they might feel a bit judged and actually i don't care i don't know their situation i don't know their goals their values i don't know their budget and often you'll see people and this is what another thing that really frustrates me about a lot of influencers such as eddie abu or is it tonic health or there's a few others who go into supermarkets and shout at people because they're picking certain foods in their trolley. You know what? Sincerely, fuck off. I've got none of your business telling people what to eat. You don't know the circumstances, you know the goals, and you're judging them, and you need to just fuck off. But yes, we need to give out messaging, and these people aren't good source of information in general, so I'd completely ignore them in general anyway. Judgment, nothing positive comes from me judging people me offering to help them and seeing understanding and getting a bit more narrative and, and understanding where where they want to go what they're trying to achieve if they want my support that is i'm not here forcing my opinion on anyone if people want to take it that's completely fine but that's where we can work together and we might talk about some changes but i'm not here to judge i'm here to help i'm not here to tell someone off and it's something that i repeat to a lot of patients and clients is don't be afraid to be honest with me because actually if they're afraid of that i'm going to judge them they might not tell me the whole truth and me understanding the whole truth allows me to help them more so if they're coming through the door or they're submitting their check-in and they feel like they're going to get told off by me because they haven't done xyz then they're probably not going to be as honest as they could be. Having a, an, an environment where people can feel comp they can be completely honest allows me to do my job better and then to get better results long term. So shame and guilt and judgment are not useful tools in coaching or behavior change. We know this. It's old school. It's not evidence based and it's not effective. It might be in the short term for some people, but it, for the vast majority of people, it just cause them to go even worse or they revert for they go from diet to diet of over restriction because they can only handle it for so long so like i said open communication and non-judgmental environment are the key to building successful relationships with people and a big part of that is me not judging subconsciously there might be that element of that but it's just my it's just people the way people's brains work and i also count that going well i don't know that person they don't know the situation they've not asked for my advice i'm not going to give it it's and a big question here is actually who's ever appreciated unsolicited advice from someone most of us probably don't quite often and people who offer it usually have an inflated opinion of themselves so yes i don't judge people for their decisions i don't understand i don't know their background i 
don't understand the situation, their goals. If we're working together, then I can develop an understanding and help them get to a position where they want to go to by improving their diet, becoming more active. But that's just a snapshot. If I'm sat with someone and I see someone who may be overweight, who has got a packet of crisps in their shopping basket, you know what? I hate crisps as well. It's completely fine. It's no no problem. And I'm not going to hear tell. I'm not going to tell them I'm off. I'm not going to pick it out and tell him it's shit food like Eddie Abu does because he's a knobhead and he has no he has no opinion that I value in general. I, I think it's from a really uneducated background and he is entertaining. He is not informing. He is not educated on this topic. He, he, yeah, so that's why I, I go down there. I'm not judgmental route because I don't think it's particularly useful, effective or helpful for anyone involved. Next up... And last but not least is I try not to base my worth on my physique. And this is something that I've really struggled with over the years, especially in the fitness industry as a personal trainer. I was always one of the bigger personal trainers, carried a bit more body fat. I was a semi-professional rugby player at the time. And it was something that I really, really struggled with because it people I felt that people would judge me. But as actually I got more and more mature, learned more about it, developed a better relationship with my body. But also as I worked with people, I people actually appreciated that I probably looked a bit more quote-unquote normal and also I worked on how I judge myself and I, I try not to now my body isn't my business card my qualifications and expertise and experience of working in the fitness industry are and me working with clients and getting them phenomenal results is what I do I'm not here to be a fitness model on the cover page I don't think that's a particularly healthy look for a lot of people. And actually, a lot of the people I work with aren't aspiring towards that anyway. And a lot of the people who I work with will, will probably appreciate that I'm coming from a pretty normal background, someone who's struggled with their weight in the past, who has gone on their own weight loss journey, who has learned a lot about nutrition, got the massive nutrition, who's been in the gym as a personal trainer and worked with a lot of people to improve their fitness, strength, muscle mass, but also not pressured people into looking a certain way and actually found other reasons for people to exercise that they don't need to lose weight they can actually just move and have someone there to help them learn how to exercise a bit better that's completely fine as well so that's something as a professional as well when i knew of the professionals their physique isn't something that i value as bad as that sounds it's completely up to them so whether they on the fitness cover of a magazine or not actually how their values their expertise their qualifications their experience and their results with clients in general that all speaks volumes to me and it's not something that I hold a lot of people to and I, I'd like to think people do that with me as well so like I said look for someone if you're looking to work with someone with a proven track record and have a look at their previous clients speak to their previous clients if anybody wants to speak to any of my previous clients I'd obviously ask my clients I'm happy to speak to them but that's more than okay because they're the ones who will probably have a real understanding of what it's like to work with that person and obviously look for people who use evidence-based practices who aren't um, promoting things that seem a bit too good to be true or against the grain because actually the stuff that we speak about and stuff the messaging that i speak about regularly is the stuff that works it isn't the jazzy stuff that i can bottle up and sell you as a supplement it's the consistency it's working on healthy habits working a better relationship with yourself managing your stress and sleep um, having a balanced approach to your nutrition your exercise your overall lifestyle looking at your values and goals all these wonderful things that i always speak about so hopefully that's giving you a bit more of an insight of the things that i don't do as a nutritionist that people might expect around buying organic foods using or feeling like i need to earn my food through exercise avoiding high calorie foods because they're bad they're problematic they're dangerous they're ultra processed they should be avoided that's not the case at all i try not to judge other people's food choices around or their choice around exercise that everyone's on their own journey everyone's got their own lived experiences and i don't know their values their goals or their history and also i try not to base my worth on my physique which is something that has taken a while to come to but actually i feel very comfortable where i'm at now and i think a lot of people who work with me appreciate that that i'm all about living a healthy and balanced lifestyle and for me that probably doesn't look as lean as potentially other people but that's okay with me because you know what i'm doing my own thing i'm living a healthy and happy balanced life by my own uh, measurements so that's that's the thing that i'm aiming for 
So there you have it. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode of the Balanced Approach podcast. If you have any questions, queries, or would like to reach out to me, please do. I am at Louis Padian Nutrition, which is at L-O-U-I-S P-A-D-I-A-N Nutrition on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and all of the social media platforms. If you're looking for support in achieving your goals and living a healthier, happier, and more balanced life in the process, click the link below and inquire about working with me. Remember to subscribe to the Balanced Approach podcast wherever you're listening for more insightful episodes and I look forward to speaking to you soon.